eighth. Well, now I did hear fine. You, you can, go, I can go up. They said. Thanks for being the guinea pig, Bill. I appreciate this. Uh, is the right answer. My pleasure. <laughs> Well, I, I guess we'll I guess we'll figure it out after the next ten minutes when I sit down and talk to you. Sure. Anyway, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. We are live from ShmooCon 2023. My name is Danny Akoski. I am, as you know, some of you know me as Rando. Some of you know me as just Danny. I'm the customer success director here at Trimark Security. And um, recently, we started doing these live happy hours Fridays, and we said. Uh, well, hell, we're going to be at Shmoo. Like, why mess up our cadence and bring all your stuff here? So I drove it down. One of the first people that I thought to Shanghai, and forgive me, uh, Pollock? Awesome. I saw I saw Bill Pollock walking around Shmoo, who I've never really had a chance to talk to so much. We had dinner a very long time ago with uh, Jameson Shears. I hope I paid. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, you did. <laughs> okay, that's good. We went to a very nice uh, whiskey bar <laughs> oh, here yeah. in D.C. The one with all the whiskeys around the... Um, around the perimeter of the restaurant. Well, that might have been Jack Rose, but I, I don't remember. It was Jack Rose, as a matter of fact. Um, so one of the first people that I saw, and I've been a huge fan of yours. Thank you. For years. And uh, I thought, I'm going to pull in as many people as I can in the next hour and just see what hacker is where. But you specifically, Bill, um, when it comes to, like, publishing and... Uh, and uh, depends on, okay, cool. Uh, when it comes to publishing, you've done more for this industry and for hackers uh, and uh, uh, professionals in InfoSec than literally anyone. Because I've seen you put up book after book. I've seen you solicit for ideas. And I'm always curious, like, what that process is for you. Like, if there is somebody watching right now, right? I like to do, talk about things that are actionable for people, right? If somebody wanted to write a book and put it out through no stuff, how, like some dude sitting or say uh, some, you know, uh, they, them, women, men are sitting there right now saying, I have an idea. Right. And I would love to publish something. What's the process even look like for somebody to start with no start? So first, thank you for the, the compliments. I appreciate it. It's, I've been making books for this community since probably 1998, I think. And uh, one of the titles I'm most proud of is Hacking the Art of Exploitation, which was last released in 2008, but still one of the best selling titles on our list. Uh, in terms of the future of the list and the way that, that we process things, I care a lot about what people want. So I, I attribute much of our success to reflecting what our readers want. So when you say to me, I really need something like, like this, I think we, I try to mirror that. One reason why I spend time at conferences is to understand what this community is looking for and what it needs. I have a different kind of view, which is the view of a book publisher. I'm not a professional in security, although I've personally worked deeply on many of the books that you may know. I'm not the author, but it's important to me to make sure that when you read the information, you can follow it. So for example, Practical Malware Analysis, the best book on malware analysis, years old, still bestseller because it's so well done. So, Sikorsky and Honig, and I think it was last published, it's probably maybe getting on eight eight years old, or even a book by you know, Georgia, we Georgia Weidman's penetration testing book. Yeah. Uh, Jean-Philippe Amason's series cryptography, which was actually the last book that I worked on in 2017, which was my gift to the community in many cases. Like, we, we needed in this community a good understanding of how cryptographic algorithms work. So I worked very closely with him to make sure it was on track. Hawker GTFO, The Bible, is by Travis Goodspeed, who was sitting over there. Let me tell you, real quick, it is now a tradition for me whenever I go to DEF CON every year. It's, they are the most beautiful books that I have ever seen, and I make it a point to get my next copy if it's available. Uh, quick story. You actually were responsible, you and Travis and whoever made that book, for getting me the longest delay that I've ever had at TSA at, uh, at McCarran ever. <laughs> and this is the dumbest thing, though. So, no, naturally, when we leave Vegas, right, we could have all manner right. of tools and, right. and, and uh, shimmies and lockpicks. No. This guy went into my bag. I stood there for a good 20 minutes before he even came over. And he proceeds to pull out a door pry bar, lock picks, 
a tactical spork that could probably stab a cow, right? I know all of these things. Yeah. Oh my god. But the thing he pulls out is POC GTFO. And he starts flipping through it. He goes, you know, people hollow these out and hide things in these. I was like, is this Sing Sing? Like, is this is, is, is this Rikers? Like, who's hollowing out a book to putting things in? And he thought that it was like that, so that's I almost missed my flight because of POC GTFO. I mean, it's a printed book, so you could just flip the pages and see that there's nothing inside. Yeah. If each page is separate, then how is it being hidden? He took his time. He, he was even comp he did compliment the gilding and the and all of that. And I was like, that's very nice. Can I go home now? I'm about to hop a red eye, and you're like uh, pulling a Shawshank on me. So anyway, I wanted to tell that story. No, no, yeah. Tra well, Travis is an old friend, and that those books are all Travis's work. I, we were simply walking around DEF CON one time. We used to hand out the journals. And I said to him, like, oh, is this? Okay, okay. Uh, Sorry, I, we're doing it for the first time live here, folks. So sometimes I got to adjust things. Okay, beta test. Beta test. Beta test might always be forever in case there's some software on the market. <laughs> So, so I said to Travis, because it's delivered by a preacher, why don't we combine these and make a Bible? And I found a Bible printer, and we printed it at, like a Bible. It's got a Bible cover, Bible paper, bookmark, good its pages. But Travis Goodspeed did all the work. I just made sure it would happen. The publisher's role is to basically, it's like good stage lighting. If I'm doing my job, you don't even know that I had a hand in it. But my company is pretty closely held, as in I run the company. And getting back to your earlier question, which is if someone's interested in writing for us, some people hesitate to send us proposals because they think, oh, no charge will never do that. But they might be surprised. I'm happy to have a dialogue. The one thing to note is you can email me, Bill, at nostarts.com, but the problem is it's going to be in a giant pile. So if people want to send something in, write to editors. That's the secret. Sure. And that routes to six people. And then I'll see it. So I, we like to be involved early in a project. I'd much rather a new author come to us with an idea and a basic plan so we can work with them than here's my finished book. In order to make great books, which is always my intent, we want to make sure that I, I, I've been making books since 1987. Mm -hmm. I'm an old man. I've, been, I've edited probably 400 books, and I mean edited, hands-on edited. So I have a lot of experience to share, which I'm happy to share. So what I would encourage people to do is send in the idea with the basic plan. Because an idea, I can just say like, okay, show me the bait. I need to see what the book would look like. I don't need a finished book. Talk with us about the idea. And I will tell you directly like what, what I think it might need. My track record is generally very good. It's not that I don't have my failures, but my company hasn't had a down year in 30 years. Wow. With that, that's really unusual in the book business. And it's not because the number of titles go up, it's because of the way we focus on what we produce. My goal is always to make something great. Uh, just so I, I also created a, I, well, I, I f funded a nonprofit now called Hacker Initiative, mm. which was called the No Starch Press Foundation. And that's been going great. So that's a public charity. So to the people who might be working on a project, we encourage people to reach out to submit for a grant. And we just opened up the grant cycle on March 1st this year. That's another attempt. That's awesome. My attempt to give back to the community, and I, I, I started the funding. But I'm, I'm, a board, I'm on the board. It's driven by the community. I'm just a board member. So where, where, where were you? Were you always in and amongst the hackers, like guys? Like, like, where did you start before you started Node Stars Press? I well, I was actually on a pre-med track. I was in a, I was on my way to medical school. I dropped out the morning of my first organic chemistry test, not because it was hard but because I saw the future, which was, I'm gonna be memorizing stuff and forgetting it that afternoon, which is exactly what would have happened. Sure. Uh, I was, this was a University of Pennsylvania. It was guaranteed admission to medical school. And I went the next day and I said, I'm leaving the program. And they're like, what? You can't leave, we don't want you to leave. But it's like, I can't see doing that. So uh, I ended up going into work on medical books. Mm. So I used to rewrite books on, uh, on I, uh, re, uh, replacing uh, vowels and hearts, like a uh, company called Spring Over Lock. The books were bad, so I rewrote them. <laughs> so I, I literally, yeah. I would take them, and probably on a type, I think we had one PCXT in the whole company. So I probably rewrote them electronically, I don't remember, but uh, I would just rewrite the books. And then I just, uh, then I worked at, I went to Osborne or Grill Hill, I think after that, I can't, I can't remember. But 
It's been a long time. <laughs> Scientific publishing, computer book publishing. No, I went to uh, W.H. Freeman and Company. Mm -hmm. I was a biology. I was a very good biologist. I, I was a better biologist than him. Like a, I'm not a programmer, although I've rewritten many of the books that people use to learn programming. But I'm not writing the code. I right. can read the code. I can edit the code. But I don't really want to write code. Sure. i just not driven to it, to do it. But... Um, but I've been an editor since 1987, at least. And then, so like, where 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 did it start? As like like get like publishing hacker books and starting getting into that. Uh, Steal this computer book, which we published in 1997, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, Steal this computer book needed a lot Absolute of work. Classic. Well, the first one was completely written, rewritten by me. The entire CD was put together by me. But I didn't write the, I had the idea, I had the title, I found someone to write it, but I was getting someone involved with the community at the time, so it wasn't quite on track. So I reworked the whole thing uh, and, uh, and then put the CD together with a bunch of tools. That was the first edition. Now we're, we went through four editions. Wow. But what that did, that introduced me to a bunch of people in the community. One funny story, and I'm sure he doesn't remember, is, is uh, Simple Nomad. I wrote mm. the Simple Nomad years ago and I said, <laughs> he's now a friend of mine, uh, hey, I'd love to talk to you about you know, hacking, whatever. And his response was, who are you? <laughs> you a cop? I, 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 I didn't talk to him for years and now I, it, it's all changed, but it introduced me to many aspects of the community. And my goal has been since then to, to kind of take the lid off, teach people about stuff, make people smarter. So I, so I released Hacking the Art of Exploitation so fairly soon after that as a way to give back to the community and help to make people smarter. No one listening to this is just going to read stuff. It's just, to do this, just go here and click on the website. Sure. Yeah. There was a series of books called, uh, what, what, they, they were uh, Hacking Exposed. Right. Oh That's, God, yeah, I remember those. That was what was popular at the time. And the, the issue was you wouldn't really learn anything. There were great people on the books. But the books were collections of URLs, and that's when I was at a I was at a Hope conference. I had John Erickson's book with me. People would walk up to me, open up the book, see code, and walk away. And for those of you who know me, I sometimes a little direct. So I said, <laughs> like, look, if you want to learn something, read this. If you just want to be more annoying, go get that. By the end of the show, we sold that of hacking our exploitation. Yeah. And and it, in many ways, that changed the industry. It, it gave people a leg up. So I'm continuing to try to do that, and I care a lot about doing stuff like that. I want people to be smarter, more thoughtful, more strategic, and I do the best to fill those gaps. I mean, you're you're doing the very essence of what all of us, when we really drill down into it, past all the flash and the code and everything, is that dissemination of information. The information wants to be free. It wants to be out there, and it wants you want to share that with people, right? Like that's why I do these streams and, and we do these podcasts and things like that. I do interviews with you so that in ten years, when somebody is like, oh, I want to publish a book, or like, what's the history of this? Like, I think that's like one of the greatest goods that we can do here. Sure. Well, I, I had a question in chat because uh, we're about live on Twitch right yeah, now. Yeah, so yeah, in the yeah. chat. Uh, Bad code asks. Um, are, are you, I'm sure you're aware, like, platforms like YouTube and things are cutting down on hacking videos. We find, like, actual creators are, uh, are like, getting banned and things just for showing tutorials and things. Um, are you worried about that kind of, I guess, cancel culture around hacking? Or do we usually find ways to get our stuff out? Am I worried about cancel culture? When it comes to hacking. I mean, I think probably we all have a little bit to be concerned about with cancel culture because it's a, it can be a little bit random. Right. But I don't really think about stuff like that. Like, I just, I think it's important to get information out there. I, we have all of our books, people that don't have it, all of our books, I'm sure, are on BitTorrent. I know they are. And I have friends at the Pirate Bay, too. But, but I, I, I don't know if I'm addressing the question exactly, but what... I, I, I guess I, I think what the essence of what he's asking is, um, is, 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 is it getting a little more dangerous for what we do, talking about hacking and exploitation as a means to teach people, not just fuck stuff up, of having big platforms right. like deplatforming hackers, right? Saying, no, 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 that's too dangerous. Or, and do you see that as maybe being infectious on other platforms? I think I'm, so. If I'm understanding correctly, is the question like, is that sort of tamping down what people right. are sharing? Yeah. I, you know, you know David Bumble, have you like- I've heard the name. David Bumble's been great at kind of teaching stuff, interviewing uh, OTW who did uh, Linux Basics for hackers and stuff. So I, I don't really, I, I've always believed in many ways this is a double-edged sword. 
if you understand something, it's like, you know, you have a knife, you can kill someone, you can cut meat or, you know, whittle something. But I, 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 I don't, it certainly doesn't affect what I do, but I've, I'm not, I think, you know, we have to understand how systems work, for example, in order to protect them. We need to understand, like, I'm about to release Black Hat GraphQL, for example, we released hacking APIs. I, I don't hesitate with that, but I, we try to balance the coverage always. I think that that's important, is to make clear why are we doing this. It's, it's one thing to say, here's how you can go and break stuff and steal stuff, but we're, this is not a community where we're talking about how to steal things. Right. We might talk about how people steal things and how to protect against that. If we don't understand how people steal it, how do you protect against it? If we don't understand that, you can put five locks in your door, but if someone breaks the window, the locks mean nothing. How do they actually get into your house? So uh, it's important to me that we teach people how systems work, how programming works, how these attacks work. That's why when I worked on the Metasploit book, for example, that I wanted to make sure, and HD is an old friend, and part of it was my gift back to HD. I probably knew him since he was 15 years old. <laughs> I want people to understand that like when you push a button to run an exploit and you go against the FBI, someone's going to knock on your door. Yeah. What are you doing? To, you're not moving anything forward. You're just being more annoying, which is my earlier comment about hacking or exploitation. So I, I hope I'm not being, I'm not trying to deflect the conversation. Oh, no, no, not at all. Okay, I, was, I was trying to interpret the, the, the question here. Yeah, um, I hope that I'm answering the, the question. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we should teach. Yeah. From from so I love writing like I love blogs I lo like part of why I moved from behind the keyboard to like a customer success role is I love evangelizing and creating that content and doing that translation right in anything that you've ever written which I'm super curious about right. one of my horror stories of writing was I was uh, one of my first security gigs was at Mandiant I was one of uh, I was a consultant for them with and Sikorsky yes right yeah exactly like. That's, I actually, and, one of the first books I ever read was Malware Analysis, and I'm like, oh my God, there he goes. Um, oh my God, like. He's amazing, those two guys, I mean, that, that's a magnum opus. Yeah, Jesus. And uh, so, but when I would have to write a report about right. an event or whatever, it would have to get pushed into their, into their pipeline. My first revision, I think was 35 revisions. <laughs> Because I, like they have a very specific writing standard, right. and I, I wanted to jump off of a bridge. Okay. Because by ten, I was like, oh, okay, I'll get this. By thirty, I'm like, do I? Should I even be here? Right. Has anybody like cut apart something that you've written uh, before, or like, or has, have you ever written anything that had to go to another editor, and and then they said just cut you apart for it? Like, do you have any horror stories like that? I've done that too. <laughs> That's, and. But I always do it with the best of intentions, sure. which is, and many but not all of our authors will say, you know, you you showed me what they needed to do. My goal is always to share what I've learned, and and I and when I edit, I'm I don't pull any punches. I'll 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 try to explain what and why, and and my goal is always to help an author to be successful. My name is, has never been on the front of any of my books ever, but. But there's no question that I am in the book, in the writing. Right. But good stage lighting, right? You good, good stage lighting. You don't know did the lighting. It's like, wow, that show is amazing. How did they do it? Well, there's a whole team, and they did this thing, but they're not on the front. So, uh, I have certainly pulled stuff apart. I think the important thing to do, communication is absolutely key to explain to people, to open them up to like, hey, we're going to try to help you out here. Mm -hmm. And this is what I try to train my editors to do. They don't always do it successfully, but to make sure that authors understand the nature of development. When a book comes in, so let's talk about ChatGPT for a moment. I just got, literally I just got a question about it, about writing books and that, so perfect. So, so here's, here's what's interesting about ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT can do an excellent job of evaluating writing for issues, but I just had a chat with Travis Goodspeed actually over at lunch about this as we're walking. I don't, it will only get better, but it's not going to replace my business. It, what it means to me is, it means that my editors can do more with, with less effort at, at a certain level, right? So instead of picking things apart, we can show an author how to evaluate, but I want my editors to oversee that and make sure that we are really on track to, with, with that author and keeping, keeping the book on track. So I, I think it's an interesting tool to evaluate writing. But, but you don't see it as replacing like what you do day to day anytime soon, right? I, I, I didn't hear that. that oh, so, like, uh, so, but, but there's not, you don't see a risk of it like replacing authors. I, I mean, it will, it will write stuff. There are certain things that I think ChatGPT can actually produce very well. 
when if you have it like right it will write code for you and the code might work but might is an important operative word does it work right. is it the best way to I, I show this to my son who's a programmer it's like look here's I can't remember what it was writing but apparently it used the wrong word I think it was supposed to use lead and use something else, so it doesn't actually know best practices and it doesn't know context. I think there's still a place for people to evaluate. You have a core of good goodness. What do you do with it to make it even better? And that's how I look at what we can do with these tools. Use it as a tool where I can say, hey, take a look at that, take the advice, test your writing, then send it to a human, and we'll say, look, never mind what the tool says, this works. Right. Um what do you, so I, I don't want to take a whole lot of your time, because no. like, we're at a con and yep. Yep. holding court and things sure. like that. What do you do? You're obviously very busy, right? You are among us a household name, right? And like, I've never heard a bad word about you, by the way. Like, Thank you. Like, only ever positive. Um, what do you do to unwind, Bill? Like, what is, a, what is an editor who has so much to do? Like, what do you like to do just to go home and be like, all right, I'm going to shut my brain off right now, and I'm going to do this thing? You mean when I'm not listening to Lamb of God or something? By the way, the shirts, <laughs> as a metalhead myself, brother, thank you so much. They are so good. I was going to drive to the Lamb of God concert in Fresno. It was about two hours, and I had to get a hotel, and I thought, I'm not going to do this. I did see uh, Mastodon, which was great. Yes, they're so, amazing. So, so one thing I like to do is I have a nice sonar system. I like to turn the metal up nice and loud. I find it actually very relaxing. Like the, like the drumming on uh, Meshuga, like which I saw, I saw them live. Just so I think I couldn't like you anymore, Bill. I, I actually, like, I knew the shirts. I didn't know you were such a metalhead. I, I mean, I started probably with Black Sabbath in the 70s. Oh, sure. And which I used to listen at full volume with my mother. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, actually thought it was pretty good. But uh, so one thing is I listen to a lot of, I've been listening to a range of music. Mm. I, I was playing classical piano for a while and I hope to take that up again. I, I have a whole range. I like jazz, I like folk. Um, I have tried to learn to grow orchids. I, I, I can't get them to flower, but I have kept them alive. I was roasting coffee. I've, I've perfected the perfect roast chicken, in my opinion. Uh, I've, now I'm into making beef jerky, which is kind of fun. Uh, I don't know, I, I like to do building remodeling, and I think it's interesting. Not personally, I just like kind of make the buildings work. So I find various things, and I like to learn. Yeah, so much of my time is spent just learning about something. Like something new, something's interesting, someone mentions something, I look it up and I start going down a rabbit hole as many of us do. And that's the way that I like to approach editing too. I go down the rabbit hole. I want the authors to go down the rabbit hole with me to a point. Because at a certain point it's like, enough for the rabbit hole, right. I'm down too deep. Like my friend's cat that apparently went into his heat register. <laughs> And he had to like get the cat out. Like, okay, that's a little far. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's dude. That's awesome. As a matter of fact, I credit the No Starts shirts with rekindling. I had lost my metal for a while, and now for the past like two years, I've gotten way more into. I mean, I'm more like metalcore and some of the newer stuff. But like, that's what I grew up on, and like, so that kind of like kindled it for like, oh, I wonder what metal's doing nowadays. And there's so much good stuff. Um, I want to personally thank you, Bill, like as, as an amateur writer myself that aspires to write a book for you one day. Um, and everything that you do community-wise, giving people an outlet to get their thoughts out and helping them with that, uh, you know, it, it's a mitzvah. I, I think it's amazing. I, 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 re I really appreciate hearing that and I encourage people to reach out. I, the, the, some people get frustrated because I don't respond. The problem is I've got stuff incoming from so many channels including my staff that I sure. just literally miss. There are emails I haven't opened for three years. I just missed them. So that's why editors at nostarch.com is the best way to reach me because one of the editors will say, hey, Bill, so-and-so is trying to reach you. Yeah. I, I, I might see you on Twitter. I might not. I might see it on LinkedIn. I might not. Mastodon, I, I, yeah, I signed up, but I'm not checking out. It's overwhelming. Too much information. Way too much. Back to the orchids and metal and coffee roasting. You know, like. what, 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 is, what is, so like just, just before you leave, if, if yeah. somebody, now they have an idea and they say, oh, I just heard Bill talk on your little thing and now I'm going to put something out there. What do your editors like to see when, when people sit like a one page on it? Like how baked out do you need a thing to be? So on our homepage, a, a site that needs to be rebuilt sometime it will, uh, there's a write for us tab. I wrote that content. Oh, okay. That's what I want. All right. I, what I really need and I want people to understand is like, I need to know what the whole book will look like. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, because when someone presents me with an idea, I have my idea and they have their idea. Then I find out totally off. So I really want the stuff there. I try to whittle it down to just what we need. 
I, I will ask people sometimes to write a sample chapter. A lot of it, I figure, is like, look, if we don't sign it, someone else will sign it. But I want to make sure that we can work with the, work with the author, give them the support that they need, make a great book. But I encourage people to reach out, and and I will do my best to get back to them. But sometimes, honestly, I'm just like exhausted, and I yeah. just can't write another word. But reach me at a conference. Just don't catch me at 2 a.m. <laughs> it's happened. And talk ideas if I'm running a whiskey tasting. Yeah. Probably not the best time. I literally, I literally grabbed the bill. I saw him talking way over there, and I said yes. And like, I he came back over this way. I was like, "You're here now. Come here." Yeah, and I appreciate it. Very gracious. I appreciate that. You're very approachable. Um, I know you have a four o'clock thing. I'll let you decompress before that. But Bill, thank you so much, man. Thank you for sitting with us. Thank you. Did I answer all the? Are there any yes. other? Yes. Okay. No, no, no. Like, okay. uh, oh, there's one more. Uh, when I had asked, and and it's probably in your section on your website. But like, how much time should this is really like select, uh, yes. objective, right? Like, right. how much time should they spend baking a thing out, or is that part of I, what you cover? I, I, I believe that every good book starts with a great plan. So Sikorsky's book had an amazing plan, which we'll share. He knows it. We have his, we'll send his proposal. I, the reason that I, I reinforce that is it's like when you build a house, you start with a thorough plan. You don't just start building. I've seen a lot of books fail because people just start writing, and then it comes to me, and it's like, look, if you just talk to me, I tell you, don't do these first three chapters. Don't need it. Yeah. So, so come up with, I, but I want to be able to have, I want to be able to imagine it. What I say to people, and it seems to make sense, is when you can turn the pages of the book in your mind, you've got a good plan. But otherwise, you're just, it's kind of amorphous. So you want to get to the point where it's like, you know the book that you want to write. I will give you feedback, and I'll tell you why. It works. Here's a concern we have. What's one of the most uh, it's kind of heartbreaking things for me is when someone comes to us with a 5 page book and they said, this is cool, but this is a fundamental problem that we could have addressed. I'm happy to direct, even if you don't write for us, I will say to you, like, right. like what would you do with this? Because some of the book, not every book is for us. You want to do documentation? I'll, I'll give you suggestions on how to do it. I've edited so many books. I'm happy to share. Many of my books are under free licenses too, which I'm never concerned of, concerned about. But I like teaching. I always have. Yeah. I like learning, and I like learning together with an author. Who, who are some of your favorite authors that you read for pleasure, or do you read for pleasure? That, that, do, do, like, do you do you sit down and read for pleasure? I just had this conversation over lunch too. Generally, I I read to learn. So, uh, but because I'm an editor, one challenge. I used to read a lot of poetry actually, and I was I took lots of English classes. And I used to read, but I actually don't generally sit down to read a book because I start editing. Mm -hmm. it's so, so if I have a problem, I'll just stop. Yeah. I just get frustrated. Like, didn't anyone look at this? Like, at all? So I just like, I leave it aside. It's not that I don't appreciate great writing. It's not that I don't admire people who can sit down and read a book. Uh, the last, I used to re try to read a lot of uh, Ian M. Banks, but. Uh, well, use of weapons was cool, but I don't like formulaic writing, and I get frustrated because I want to have a pen, a virtual pen, or right. I just can't continue. So I read to learn. I read a lot of business stuff. I do investing is interesting. Mm -hmm. I like to learn about economics, and I like to learn technology. I like to play with tools. That was part of my thing, too. I used to be an ex-radio DJ, and I got very particular about what I liked and how I sounded and how I... Sure. And so when I hear another DJ... Right. I just, I fucking can't do it. I have you know, my like, favorites, but like, I gotta turn it off. I'm like, who, who lets you do this? Right. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you have your own high standard. You have oh. your own standards, right or wrong. Yeah. You've got your own standards. High to me, which is relative, but like, oh man, like, I, I wanna call them and be like, have you, but like, I'm not gonna be that guy. Like, let you mature. I had to mature. So yeah, I totally understand yeah. that. So, so, yeah, I, I, I read cookbooks. <laughs> Right, because like it's a little harder to look at. Like you're trying to accomplish a thing while you're doing it. It's got your information. Cookbooks Maybe you're are fun. Well, I mean, I, I like to cook interesting recipes, but I, that I enjoy. But for me to sit down and read something long form, it, unless I'm editing it, is kind of unusual. Yeah, I just don't. Cool. Well, no, you've answered all your questions, Bill. Thank uh, you. I could talk to you for hours. You're a busy man. Are you staying around the con all weekend, or I'll be here through Sunday. So I'm happy to if you if you have dead airspace and whatever. You, Grab me, I'll be around. Absolutely. So, anyway, I appreciate it, I, sir. And thank you for the opportunity to sit down and chat with you and, and your listeners. Yeah. That, and, and by the way, this is going to be uploaded to YouTube. I'm going to cut it apart uh, question by question for people to have up. I'll send you the links to it and stuff. Because, again, get the information out. That's the most important thing.